Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, you know, what I want to dive into today is not only kind of your entrepreneurial journey and how you're changing people's lives with fitness, but what one of the things that attracted me to your Instagram in particular, and I highly recommend for everybody just follow you just for that alone, is your commentary to other people's posts about lifestyle and like health, health and, 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 you know, just this, the, you know, we're going to get into all that, but all this like phenomenon that's happening in the world of health and fitness and, you know, body image and all that stuff. So I find it very entertaining and also very informative. And I think that's what kind of attracted me and kept me on your Instagram because you not only showcase your own workouts, but you educate and kind of offer a different perspective from what's out there. So really excited to to chat about that with you today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if, if you if you look at the way the world is going right now, it's, it's shying further and further away from being healthy, being fit. It's cool now to uh, gain weight. It's cool now to just accept where you are and it's cool now to not better yourself. And, um, you know, I have a big issue with that being a trainer for six years. I've changed lives. Uh, I've helped and impacted so many people. So, you know, I've developed a passion for it. And it's, it's helped me, too, in my life and my journey and becoming a man and becoming more mature and getting better. So um, that's kind of where I, um, w- why I make my videos. And mm. a lot of people love them. They, they love the videos. People come up to me in the gym all the time and they, they tell me to keep going. So it's not going to yeah. stop. Mm-hmm. Well, I love it because it just gives a different perspective. And I think that's important. So for example, the latest one, I think it was the recent one you posted. It was a girl and she was she was talking about how, well, guys on on uh, uh, social media or on their dating profiles, I think it was, they showcase like how, oh, they go to the gym. And then she says, but do you do this? And do you read books? And do you, you know, do you go to a religious community and do that? And your answer was so brilliant. But tell me, tell me, give us a little bit more context and tell me what was your answer? Because I thought it was so good. Yeah. So basically the girl, she, uh, she basically said, do you go to church? Do you read? And she asked a few more questions. I I can't remember off the top. Mm -hmm. And my thing was, you know, from, from being in the gym community and seeing people join the gym community, I've seen how their lives have getting have gotten better. I've seen their discipline go up. I've seen their consistency go up. I know people who have made more money because of the principles that they've learned from the gym. And um, it's it's and oh oh she asked if um if they're binge drinkers. Right. And I, I know people who binge drink. They're not in the gym, and I know <laughs> right. people who are in the gym, and they're not binge drinkers. And um, so she uh, she tried to paint. Uh, she was talking about men. She tried to paint uh, guys in the gym in, in, a, in, a, in a bad light. And I, I didn't really appreciate that. So I had to come to our defense, me being a man in the gym. So the, that's yeah. pretty much all that was. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think it was such a such a good point because a lot of people, I think, don't understand the connection between performance and just the world of work or how we show up and, and certain things. And as you said, fitness not only builds your discipline, but it builds all confidence and self-respect and, and all these things, resilience, right? Because when you're like at the gym working out, if you can do more reps, so you can run faster, you can, you know, achieve these, these fitness goals, it makes you more confident. You're like, well, if I can do that, what else I can do? And usually there's direct translation to the world of work. So, and I agree, there's a lot of people uh, on, on online as you, as we see on your Instagram, but I led the audience to kind of go to your Instagram, and check out the rest. It's just, it's just brilliant. So, um, so tell me a little bit more about, um, so you, you talk a lot about um, on your YouTube, not a lot, but you, you have heard you talk about the entrepreneurial journey. So talk to me a little bit about the ups and downs that you've had, whatever you feel comfortable sharing and just, you know, people who are listening who are like, Hey, I've been thinking about doing this or just entrepreneurs, not even in the fitness industry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so uh, I come from a sports background. So that's part of the reason why um, I'm such a great trainer. Um, I, lo- I know how to be honest with people. I've dealt with coaches who are honest with me and, you know, I've had my struggles in sports and that's where I learned how to look myself in the mirror and hey, are you doing X, Y, Z? Do you need to get better at X, Y, Z? This is why this isn't happening. And so that's why I've, the entrepreneur world fits perfectly with me. So I started off uh, my training career accidentally. Um, I don't know if you saw this on YouTube, working at the front desk, trying to go overseas and play basketball. And you know, it kind of just fell in my lap. Uh, somebody at the gym kept suggesting I do it. So I did it. You know, I'm trying to make a long story short. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when I started, people were literally laughing at me. 
Um, you know, my mom kept asking me, do I want to get a real job? They kept saying real job, real job, real job. And um, uh, some of the trainers there, they, they told me what they were making. And I'm like, this guy never played division one. You know, I've been on ESPN. I've been on Fox Sports. He can do this. I know I can do it. And, um, you know, I, I built myself up. I came out with the clothing line. Um, you know, fast forward a little bit, uh, COVID happens. You know, I was I was living in L.A. at the time, which was probably the, uh, you know, the roughest city with restrictions, non essential business. And, you know, I found myself, I had no clients at one point and I was door dashing to pay the rent. And, you know, I ended up, you know, towards the end of COVID, I probably had about three clients and I was still door dashing. Uh, that's when I decided to come back home because before I went to L.A., I had about, you know, 30, 40, 50 clients here in, in the DMV area. And uh, so I came back home and I had to start the business over again. I had, you know, I had to put myself out there. I had to move back in my mom's house for a little bit till I got things going, you know, so. And that, that brought uh, a lot of um, a lot of difficulties, a lot of obstacles. But, you know, I got through it. And here I am six years later, still doing my thing. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the honesty because I think the world of entrepreneurship is such a trend right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's like everybody talks about the kind of the end result and nobody really understands what it takes. And, and that, that sometimes it takes time and that life happens like COVID and million of other things that can come into play so it, it defines a true entrepreneur right it's um it's what you described as like the roller coaster of entrepreneurship in general my audience knows my story so they 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 they, they know i know where you're coming from i've had my series of ups and downs and um throughout the you know last several years so um so it's i, I love how honest you are and just like like just like this is what it is and and it's just it's just part of the journey Mm -hmm. um, so, and now you not only do you train, but you also have, um, this kind of motto, which is less brunches, more crunches. And I love your shirts, by the way, I'm wearing one too, for those people who are listening, but it. <laughs> it's super comfortable. It's super comfortable. And it's catchy. I see it. I love the branding. He's showing a cup for those that are listening and not watching the video, but I love it. It's super, I really don't, I, I, I wear it. Like I just wear it. Like <laughs> that's so comfortable. So tell me about less crunches, more, uh, well, less brunches, more crunches. How do you come up with that? So it's it's a crazy story. So um, I was at Soul Cycle with uh, one of my homegirls a while back. I think it was 2017. And the way DC is, DC is a big brunch city. So mm -hmm. you, we went to Soul Cycle and brunch was across the street. <laughs> so, we, so we went to brunch across the street. And, um, you know, I was just posting that uh, I worked out first and went to brunch. And I put on my story, less brunches, more crunches. And everyone was like, what is that? And people were... Like, yo, is that is that like your thing? And I was like, no, I just I said it. Like when I I joke and rhyme a lot. So it's just it was just <laughs> random. And um somebody told me to put it on a shirt. So, you know, after about two weeks, I, I got it on a shirt, wore it in the gym, and everyone was like, yo, what is that? And um, so, you know, I probably spent like maybe a hundred dollars and got a few t-shirts and sold out. So that's when I started going with it. So now I got shirts, sweatsuits, I got socks, I got a little bit of everything, so. Yeah, I love it. It's so, I really mean it's super comfortable because a lot of people, when they do like the branding and the logo, it's not always the most comfortable thing. Mm -hmm. So when you get something like it's comfortable, you can work out it, you could do it like as a lifestyle and it's catchy, like less, cr less brunches, more crunches, right? Like it's just, you I mean, know. all the time, all the time. <laughs> I bet, yeah. I mean, so it's, a, I, I gotta get more from you. Um, so talk to me a little bit more about um, just, just kind of fitness in its own. So, a lot of people struggle with weight loss, right? So what have you seen is the the biggest challenge? What is it so hard for so many of us, myself included, right? Like I've had my own challenges. Like what is it about, you know, weight loss that we're all after it, first of all, and then we all want to be fit, but it's so hard to get there. So I think it's not. Big, yeah, yeah, no, I think the two biggest things are uh, number one is we have that um, we have the habit of consistency already built in us but we're just consistent with the wrong things mm. you know humans we're consistent with eating the wrong stuff we might be consistent with drinking the wrong things we might be consistent with watching too much netflix consistent with too much leisure time we know how to be consistent but we we just do it with the wrong things and then two with everyone being on that entrepreneur journey that you just mentioned there's so many gimmicks out here mm. lack of education it's easy to fall into the quick fix. 
it's easy to fall into uh, the flat tummy tea, the the waist trainer, the the fat loss pill. It's so easy to fall into it because we don't have education. We don't know how important it is to build muscle. We don't know how important it is to drink a certain amount of water every day. We don't know how important it is to get consume fruits and vegetables, consume protein. So yeah. those are the two biggest things that hold people back. Yeah, I think people just look for magic formulas. It's the same with everything. Like everybody wants a magic formula and like there is no magic formula, right? <laughs> if there was one, what would that be in your opinion? We all would be fit. <laughs> <laughs> I said we all would be fit. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody would be fit. Yep. Yeah. But so what, if, if you could create a elixir of ingredients for one to drink to, to reach the results, what, what would you put in there? Just like anything like, Anything that's pretty standard that we all should be doing, or is it truly like depending on individual uh, body composition, genetics? I don't know something else. Is there anything? What's in your opinion? Just, just anything in, in the in the drink, like a quick fix drink. No, no, no. I mean, like an actual, like like an actual, like uh, if people who actually do want to get in shape, it's mm -hmm. not going to be the magic way. It's not going to be the magic formula. But if you could create one that actually works, mm -hmm. right? Like, what would that be? Like, what you know, like talking about what actually does work. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. Um, I think going to the gym three to five times a week is essential, mm -hmm. right? Um, you have to do strength training, some form of weightlifting, consume your protein, drink a gallon of water every day, hmm. and um, fruits and vegetables. For uh, Vegetables in your meals with complex carbs and then snack on fruit. And that's it right there. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right. It's so simple. Um, have you seen people that um, what are some unrealistic things that I guess people want to achieve when they come to you when they start training with you like I want to be fit in I don't know two weeks or a month I need to fit into this dress like is there such thing as unrealistic expectations from clients it, it happens pretty often you know especially with women they come to me they might have a birthday coming up with, mm -hmm. or like a birthday trip then they want to get ready for the birthday trip in like two or three weeks and then they don't want to come back they don't, they don't want to do anything afterwards and i'm like no this is, this is something you have to carry on for the rest of your life unfortunately so yeah, um, yeah that happens a lot um it's like, a lifestyle right yeah and then a lot of the girls they they want to have the surgery body or like a you know they'll show me somebody they want to look like with a big butt and i'm like that's that's not real that's, yeah the bbls is that what it is Yells, yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, that's not gonna happen. I talk about that a lot on my podcast. Yeah, you do. It's it's entertaining. <laughs> it's in, but it's informative because so many people after this, you know, the BBLs. The recent one is the um, uh, I forget what the artist's name is. Um, uh, but anyway, she the how she she went after it. And what's important, what I like you discussing is is people only see like one side of the story, mm -hmm. but then you like actually it might be true for her because of X, Y, and Z, but it might not be true for you. And this is where the education part comes in, right? Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on educating people and, and telling them the real side of the story, even though it's uncomfortable and I get all type of DMs and comments that are <laughs> very negative and disrespectful. I'm still willing to educate people on it. Yeah, what's the what's the like the worst one you get? Like, give me an example, like a couple of them. Um, I mean, I get stuff every day. I mean. <laughs> People come for, they call me gay, they <laughs> call me dusty, they call me broke, um, people call me a loser, they say I don't get any girls, I'm not a real man. Oh I'm my gosh. Crazy, and I'm being clean right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> being clean right now, yeah, I get all types of stuff. They, uh, yeah, I get all types of stuff. You know, that it, it reminds me of a famous like phrase that says, I've never seen a hater doing better than me. So okay. like, you know, it's always like that. It's always those that like. And you know what? The people that say it, they never have a profile picture. Really? They oh, never God. have. It's like they don't have a profile picture. They have some generic name. You go to their page, <laughs> no pictures, no videos, nothing. So, <laughs> they don't so, even want to be known. Like, let me see what you look like. <laughs> yeah, all the oh, time. Oh, my God. The trolls on the Internet. Uh, so to that, to, on this topic, how important is environment? And this is a two-part question. One, for you, how important was your environment as you're kind of building up, you know, your your uh, business and kind of your fitness career? How was environment important in your case? It's very important because, uh, you know, starting out, uh, I mentioned like I, I got a lot of negative comments from friends and family and starting out, 
I didn't have the mental capacity to tell myself the positive things I need to hear. Like, like now I, I don't have to hear any positivity. I'm good. Yeah. But back then, you know, just being in that gym environment, um, I had, uh, I kind of worked as an assistant for a trainer starting off and he was, he would be teaching me the game and he always, you know, told me how much potential I have and, um, you know, tell me he's proud of me and just basically teaching me like, Hey, don't do that, do this, do that. And, uh, that was a very positive influence. And, um, just the, just at, at my gym specifically, and I'm sure it's other gyms like this, but it's super, it's super positive, super positive. It's like yeah. a big brotherhood and sisterhood. <laughs> with all the trainers. So that helped me out a lot. And then, um, you know, if you're not a trainer, uh, just if you're a regular at a gym, you know, more more than likely you're going to, you know, find some friends in there, especially if you're going at the same times every week. You're going to see people in there. You're going to have conversations. People want like, you know, sports that you like or a show that you like. Something's going to draw you together. So that is important because you might have a bad day at work or a rough week, mm. but you might not look forward to doing your workout, but you want to look forward to that uh, family environment, that camaraderie. So, um, you know, the environment is everything for sure. And yeah, then absolutely. one more thing too, like if I'm big on doing what I do, because maybe if you don't have any of the environments I just mentioned in the gym, you could watch my content or people like me to, you know, make you feel comfortable, make, uh, make you realize you're making the right decision by getting fit, motivate you, fire you up a little bit, educate you. So, um, I feel like I'm an extension of the gym environment just on social media. Yeah, no, it's totally true. And that's what I love about social media is like you can tailor it towards your own audience, uh, like even as a viewer, right? So if you expose yourself to that environment, it's beautiful. Like even myself, like I, I follow a lot of trainers and, and and they'll be posting stuff, you including like doing a workout. I'm like, man, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. Like it inspires me. I'm like, okay, like I need to go to the gym. They're working, they're killing it out there. Like I need, I need, I need to keep up, you know? So it's um it's it's motivating, right? So and it's that social media is an environment on its own as well, which I think like you can be exposed to one thing or that you choose what you're exposed to on there. So yeah, definitely, and yeah. uh, it's always good to follow people that you that motivate you that or what you want to be like because it's easy to get negative stuff on your timeline or your your algorithm, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it goes to uh, your earlier experiences. You know, it's like, I, I always find it interesting. And I think it comes with after like years and years of experience for, for many of us, right, myself included, but it's like, don't go for advice for people for, to don't go to entrepreneurship advice for people who are super comfortable in a corporate career. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they just did. It's a completely different world. I've, I, I'm in both. And it's a completely different world. And and vice versa, if you want to be, want to have a comfortable corporate career, don't go to an entrepreneur because it's just a different ball game. And same thing for people who are like trainers. You know, I bet you people that were telling you like, "What are you doing?" have never one done anything on their own, and two, you know, started any kind of training business. So it's like, why would you listen to them? But you, don't, you but at that time, I'm sure you, it still hurt just as much, and it probably got you down just as much. You know what I mean? Like, because it takes time to like build our resilience. Yeah, no, definitely, that was rough. That, um, that was. I've had to have difficult conversations, but um, that's just that's just part of the game. It is. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, I'm happy I went through it, and right. I'm better because of it. You know. For sure, one hundred percent. Was there any kind of habits, um, habits or routines that you had at that time that kept you kind of going, like you know, one day at a time? How did how did you get out of that low low out of those low phases? Um. I kind of just, you know, uh, I talk about my basketball career a lot because um, I faced so many obstacles and so much adversity, but I got through everything. So, um, you know, my mindset was, you know, it might it might be shitty now, but, I, you know, I'll get through it. I've gotten through everything else. Why can't I get through this? He got mm -hmm. through that, that guy. He's doing well. He has this many clients. Why can't I do it? So um, yeah. I was just kind of just keeping that positive mindset and, um it was uh, also, you know, working at front desk. <laughs> I I, I kind of talked about it on my YouTube. I'm not sure if you saw it, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I, I play basketball at a high level. But but working at front desk and seeing guys come to the gym that I played basketball with, and they're looking like, "What in the world are you doing behind this desk?" I when I tell you that was probably that it might have been the most embarrassing part of my life, and that right there, that's that that lit a fire in me. So. Mm -hmm. um, I was stopping. Um, oh. Definitely. But that was a humbling experience, I'm sure. 
that hurt. That that hurt. I, I think I might have cried. <laughs> I I, I, I'm after that. That hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share my own experience offline, not, not from my audience. I mean, they already heard this, but um, I share my own experience. So it's it's a humbling experience to be in those situations for sure. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, right? Because it's more of like, it's more of like our own reflection. It's not even about what other people think. I don't know if that was it was for you, but it wasn't about even other people thinking something. It's more about how we feel about ourselves. Did you find that the true for you? I found a little bit of both. Mm. Um, I mean, more so myself. You know, I felt like such a failure and it's, it really sucks because like I'm a, I'm a hard worker. Mm-hmm. Um, I work my butt off. You know, I'm a good kid, went to class, good, good grades, graduated on time. You know, I don't give people problems. And it's like, dang, why is, why is this happening to me? Yeah. Why, why am I getting this end of the stick? So yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's say there's a good, there's a good quote that says, um, easy choices, hard life, hard choices, easy life. And I, f- I believe that with like the, the easy routes versus hard routes, like eventually everybody, everybody hits that hard route, you know, and I feel like maybe early in life, it's better to hit it, you know, than later on. I don't know. But it's like, at least you're like, you have a little bit more ability to bounce back and like, you know what I'm saying before? I don't know. But that's, that's, so I always remember that quote, you know, when I have to like make certain choices to do certain things as hard as it may be and as, as embarrassing as whatever they may feel like, but it's like, that's, that's the way to go way to go exactly yeah um so talk to me a little bit about your routine currently so you wake up super early is that by choice or is it because you have clients or a little bit of both it's a little bit of both i don't have to take clients that early but yeah. uh, you know i'm still i'm I, I'm still training full-time obviously i don't want to do it one day but if i have you know committed clients who are you know consistent they're gonna pay me they, they're gonna show up yeah it's, hard. it's, it's absolutely fine um I mean, if I really don't have anything to do at night, that's going to keep me. That, that, yeah. that I don't have a reason to not go to bed on time. <laughs> right. So you know, I, I still do it, and uh, so I'll, I'll train from five. I'll train my groups from five to seven thirty. Mm-hmm. Um. Sometimes I'm done for the morning at seven thirty, so I'll just you know come home, eat, chill out, um, and then I'll I might have a one on one at seven thirty. If not, I'll have a one on one at eleven thirty. And uh, I'll work out from around 12, 30-ish, 1. And then I have clients from 3 to 5. And then I'm done for the day. So Yeah. Um, well, out of everything that you've been through, what are you most proud of? What have you, what have you, what is your most proud achievements? My most proud achievements? Um, Give me like top two. Maybe it's hard to find one, but. Uh, uh, definitely, though, the I, I mentioned it, the, the, the COVID, you know, just uh sticking with personal training through covid um and i don't know if i told this i think i told this story on youtube but um you know so i mentioned i was door dashing and i didn't have any clients so you know and rent every all the bills in california are high i got a car note so i was door dashing and pretty much you know spending all of my money on bills and you know i managed to save some money and i bought when i when i when i picked up a few clients during covid I bought some equipment to put in my parking garage in my apartment. And I bought a shed, locked the shed up. And I would do it for my clients and I would do it for myself too because I wasn't working out. I was getting skinny. I was losing my muscle. And so I was down there working out one day and a guy from the leasing office came downstairs and he was like, hey, you can't do this. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm not like bothering anybody. And he was like, yeah, you, you, you just can't. And I was like, can you explain to me why? Then give me an explanation and just walked away. And I was like, you still want me to pay the rent, right? This is this is how I make my money. The rent is still, right? And the guy just ignored me and walked away. So I finished my workout and, you know, I trained clients down there for the next week or two, came down, everything was gone. So I don't know if someone stole it. I don't know if somebody saw my Instagram and found out where I live and stole it. I don't know if the apartment did it. But my stuff was gone. And here I am, you know, doing everything I can to, you know, keep my entrepreneurial journey going during COVID. I can't control when the gym's open and I hit another low. And man, that was bad. That was, I, I felt defeated. Mm. I, I really considered giving up personal training um, at that point. Mm. But I got through it. I got through it. And 
I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm glad I didn't quit. Yeah. That must have been tough. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, right? That was tough. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like, you know, dumbbells and um, plates and barbells were $100, $200. dollars expensive, yeah. I understand why somebody stole it, but dang, why why you had to steal it from me? Right? Oh gosh, talk mm -hmm. about tests. <laughs> so I was like, do you really want to do this? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's uh, oh, I feel I I just I, I I can't even imagine how you feel. Like I feel it for you as you're just talking about it. Like I feel how much you must have been crushed <laughs> crushes me just thinking about it. Um, yeah, it's and 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 I did watch that video, and you were saying that uh, during pandemic the equipment was like it was like you know it was so everybody was like buying off it was like hard to find and what's interesting it was and i was stuck in russia different store for a different day for three and a half months and i was also trying to my brother and i were trying to buy equipment to work out at home and we couldn't find anything because it was all like everybody was buying it for home workers because all the gyms were closed it was crazy and i, did, I had no idea this was happening here too yeah oh yeah this was um yeah la was bad it was really bad yeah it was the worst in the country by far yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I heard about it afterwards in terms of how bad things got in LA, but um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, but yes, and you made it through. I know you're over here, you're sitting here, and we're talking about it. And it's like, how does it feel to like reflect back on it? And, and like, like what emotions come to mind, if anything? I mean, I, it's just joy. Like, I feel like I can yeah. get through anything. So, right. Pretty much like, even with this podcast, this podcast was just the one that I have. It's, it's a yeah. test, it's a test. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just go full throttle with it. And, yeah. Know. What made you start the podcast? Um, I know I I don't want to do full time training forever. Uh, right. I'm gonna have to slow down at some point. And I know I I'm gonna I feel like I can monetize it eventually. Um, yeah. I have such a unique story, and like my day to day training mostly women. It's it's crazy. I I'm. <laughs> I'm dropping a podcast tonight and I basically talk about how, you know, I had a conversation with this girl. One of my clients has a BBL and, you know, her mindset towards fitness is just, you know, it's really bad, really, really bad. So, I don't, and I mean, it, it's crazy. Some of the conversations I have, like, um, basically, you know, she's trying to tell me her life changed <laughs> after she got it. And I was like, were you a virgin before the B BBL? And she was like, uh, yeah, uh, no, I wasn't. And I'm like, okay, nothing changed. Because dudes wanted you then and they want you now. So what's the difference? And it's just yeah. like crazy conversations I have with people every day about eating clean. She she told me she might need to get hypnosis because she can't get her mind right to eat clean. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah. I'm That's like, a I got I to gotta share this with somebody. So And people love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait till it's coming out tonight. Yeah, it comes out tonight. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. It's uh, what's interesting is that also, and I'm curious from your perspective, um, a lot of the eating stuff in particular, because I think you you're certified in nutrition, right? So you you probably know a lot a lot more than I do in that space. So it, what's interesting is that a lot of the eating aspect is so emotional. It is right. Like talk talk to us a bit about that because I think people because. And maybe I'm wrong, but my assumption is sometimes people can be doing all the right things, but then because they're holding on to all this energy and and the stress and and emotions, it's almost as if your body's not reacting. Like, can you tell me a little bit more about that? In your opinion? Yeah, that definitely affects it. Um, but uh, a lot of people aren't doing the right things. A lot of people think they're doing the right things, and and they're not. Um, a lot of times, like you, it's it's hard if you get like a. Uh, you might get like a gym, like a meal plan from, I, I hate to say this because I'm not saying that they're wrong, but let's say you get something from my fitness pal mm -hmm. and that might not, that might not be what you need. You know, you might need something else. You might need to go see a nutritionist and talk to him. You might be eating too many carbs. You might not be eating enough protein. And so um, a lot of times people will say like, um, oh, I went vegan and no, say they're doing all the right things but you're overloading on unnecessary carbs mm. Still drinking sugary stuff so sometimes um the stress can play a factor but nine times out of ten they're probably not doing the right thing they're probably overeating still and they're probably not in a caloric deficit mm. but yeah stress definitely plays a factor i always tell my clients like um like if it's a new client and they're dealing with some stuff I, I tell them don't even come train until you you know figure that out you know you might have something with your spouse something with the kids but I need you locked in and focused because um 
if, if you're not locked in and focused on the workout, you're not going to be locked in and focused on the meal plan. Right. Or, said, or consistent, right? Or consistent, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, stress, stress definitely does play a factor. But at the same time, people are probably not doing the, the right meal plan that, that they need tailored for them. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Or the portion control. I think that's the bit that was the, that was the biggest one for me. Um, is like when you start weighing your food and start like entering calories and like how like portions, you're like, all right, maybe I don't need to have 20 almonds. Maybe I just need to have six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it might be healthy, yeah. healthy in moderation, right? So it's um that's my biggest like I usually eat really clean, but nuts is like my thing, and I have to stop myself. I have to like okay, I'm just gonna weigh it, you know, I count the almonds, you know, and I still overeat them because I just love them so much. So I'm addicted. It's crazy, but. Uh, you, you so you can still eat healthy but if you overeat even the healthy stuff it still has fats and calories right exactly yeah what about alcohol how do you feel about alcohol in training uh alcohol is probably worse. it's probably the, i mean if you're um uh, you know if you had a high body fat and you and you want to really uh shed fat off of your body it's it's the worst thing for shedding um i posted on my story the other day how, how many calories are in a shot of patron and it was a hundred calories in one shot. Wow. So you think about, you know, if you're, you know, out with your friends, you're enjoying yourself. Brunching. Like, brunching. <laughs> <laughs> think about, let's say you take five shots. That's 500 calories. The brunch is probably 15,000. <laughs> yeah. So you're at 2,500 calories just from a two hour brunch. And zero crunches in there. <laughs> zero crunches. <laughs> Even if you did crunch, you might, you're going to burn, if it's a good workout, you're going to burn 400, mm -hmm. 400 calories. So you're still in a surplus just off a of brunch. Right. So, yeah. And that will shut your whole workout for the week, actually, probably, because that it's just too much, right? Like, so mm -hmm. that's another follow up question. Cheat meals, cheat days. Talk to me about that. There's a lot of misconceptions. Like, what is a cheat? What's a cheat day? No such thing as a cheat day. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. And I always tell my clients, like, if you're going to do a cheat meal, make try to make it something with protein in it. Like, do you can do a burger, you know, and some fries. But try to stay away from the all the a lot of fried food, the pizza, because that's just that's just going to throw you off. No, maybe every once in a while, but yeah, a cheat meal. Still try to keep them somewhat clean. Go go to a restaurant, get you a steak. You know, at least you're going to get a, a high amount of protein along along with all that fat that's in the, in the steak at the restaurant and the butter they cook it in probably, you know. Yeah. Yeah, try to still get some macronutrients in your cheat meal. Yeah, and that, that's another good point I mentioned about eating out because they do use a lot of oils, yeah. um, a lot of oils that are not great for us. And you can have them in moderation, but if you're always eating out, they're always using the like kind of the, the vegetables, like canola oil and all those stuff. And uh, I was talking to a nutritionist on my podcast and he was saying the issue is not with that. You can have it in moderation, but the problem is that when you eat out, they put it in everything because it's like cheapest, right? Or something. So that's why yeah. versus at home, maybe you should use like olive oil. Yeah. I always encourage my clients to get, uh, they either cook their meals or, or get a, a meal prep service. Uh, that's legit because you, you might think you're eating clean when you eat out, but uh, those extra calories from those oils and the butter, that stuff adds up. And it's it, all it is is fat. It's just mm -hmm. it's just fat and um, extra carbs added to your meal. So you got to be careful with eating out all the time. Like you might get fish and vegetables and think you're doing something eating out every day, but nah. <laughs> Loaded with invisible stuff that you don't even see. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, what are you most excited for for the this next year? Um. So my uh. My clothing's doing really well, and uh, I want to get it in some uh, some stores, like some sport clothing stores, or you mm -hmm. know, wear. So um, that's my biggest task right now. So right now, I'm just focused on uh, building my inventory. So um, you know, you just bought one of my newest shirts. So. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love them. But like, they're just amazing to work out in. I love them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy more. I usually like test it out. I'm like, let me see the material. You know, like see how I feel in it, but I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I'm gonna check out your website for more. Yeah, it's good stuff. So, um, yeah, I just dropped some new. I got like shorts, hats, socks, uh, tank tops. I got all everything. Not everything, but I, I need to get more. Right now, yeah. I'm wearing leggings and um, uh, biker shorts for the women. Mm -hmm. I bought some samples and they love them. So it's great material. Do they have pockets? They do. 
Okay, good. <laughs> I was gonna say, if they don't, can you add a pocket and then I'll buy a bunch? <laughs> well, be on the lookout for that. It's coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Pockets are essential. Put your phone in there, want to run or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, before I ask you my last question that I always ask everybody, um, tell me a little bit more. Where do you hang out on social media? Where can people find you if they want to get in touch with you, order your merchandise? I'm going to share all that in the show notes, but also share with those that are listening. Yeah. So Instagram, C Marty Fit. Uh, C M A R T Y fit. You can find me on Instagram at less brunches, more crunches. Also for the gear, YouTube is C Marty fit. Um, Apple podcast is um, less brunches, more crunches podcast and TikTok C Marty fit. So you can find me at all those places. Nice. And the last question I always ask my guests is what is one question you wish people would ask themselves more often? Um, Probably, uh, uh, you can take your time. Yeah, no, <laughs> take too much time. Um, how much will I regret not taking advantage of the task at hand? How, let me, hold on, let me rephrase that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how much will I regret regret rejecting this task at the moment in the future? Mm. That makes sense. I probably yeah yeah, yeah. I I get it. How much? So how much will you say? How much will you saying no to this? Yeah. How much? How, how, rejecting this task. I get it. How, how much will you regret it in the future? So mm. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one to think about. Probably worded it terribly, but. It, it's totally fine it makes complete know, sense I, people get it we know what you mean i got you don't worry i got you <laughs> how much will you regret not doing this task or yeah not doing this task in the future yeah i like it well chris it's been a pleasure thank you so much kudos to you for everything that you're doing thank you for your authenticity thank you for beautiful t-shirts i can't wait to share more to to get more and share it with others as well and hope my audience will get a couple it's very catchy i love the gear and the just the, the branding of it very good job on that okay. um thank you so much and hopefully we'll stay in touch and have another chat once you're in big uh commercial stores and i'll be like i know him Definitely. <laughs> all right thank you thank you Thank you.